Okay, I was talking to myself then for five minutes, so we'll start again. What we're looking at today is the Magpie Auto Scan 5000. I've uh, got the instruction book here, and these were around 82, 83, 84, 199 pounds, and one of the two British made sets, either being the EMS Mercury 1040, which we did the other day, the other day, the other a uh, few months ago. We found the Mercury quite deaf by our standards and uh, it didn't work brilliantly on the test route anyway this is a t totally different kettle of fish but it's another British built set from the time and this is serial number 22 so it's quite low in production numbers there's a lot of bodging on the back um, and the, the printed circuit board component and um, the uh, print side really could do with being defluxed so i bought this about three or four years ago off ebay and i paid either 90 or 95 pounds for it as a non-worker and there was no microphone or power lead with it these are expensive and uh, I've, it probably does work it probably has a malfunction it doesn't matter we will soon find out now i've got a mic here and this came in a box of tap from a radio rally and it's nothing to do with this radio whatsoever. It may not even be wired for it, but it is the Magpie mic with the up-down buttons. So one time it was, but it may not be. It may not actually fit. We may use a generic mic um, if there's any malfunctioning with the buttons. So we'll see. I opened it up on the video, and I discovered to my horror that the the ROM here has not got a cover over its window. So I disappeared off, then I realized we weren't recording. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put one of our warranty stickers, because they're metal, over the window, because as you all know, UV erases these chips. And the last thing I want to do is to put the bench light which I'll now switch back on, shining brightly onto that chip and neatly erasing it. So now we're back to where we were. So I'll put the speaker lid on one side. It didn't come with any screws in the lid. And now I'll show you the underside, which there's a lot of afterthought parts in, in the transmitter section looking at that. Um, yeah, it's clearly low production. And that's the face if you've never seen one. And they have a fluorescent uh, display. This is a bit, what we'd say in Yorkshire, when I was in Yorkshire, it's a bit segged under. It's seen better days. It's been pushed in a bit. But it, it doesn't matter, you know, it's still all, all intact. Um, is that a, a dimmer thing? Is that uh, there? I don't know. I've only ever seen one other of these, and it was about 1987. A friend of mine at Nottingham, he bought one at a car boot sale for a tenner. And uh, when he got it home, there was no transmit. Now, one of the sales things about this at the time was these have a VMOS output device instead of a normal transistor, and it's virtually bulletproof, you know. Really good if you've got a bad SWR, it's not going to necessarily destroy the set. And you can imagine what was wrong with it, can't you? Of course, the bulletproof uh, transistor had failed. So I changed that for him, and that was that. And uh, a few years after, I said to him, uh, Have you still got that Magpie Auto scan? Oh, no, he says, I got fed up after a bit. And he says, I put it in another car boot, I got 12 quid for it. <laughs> Uh, I'd have bought it off you. <laughs> Could have saved myself buying this one, couldn't I? So what I'm going to do, I'll just go and find a power lead, unless we've got one kicking around on this bench, which is the square type. Uh, yes, I think we have. What's this? That's a Maxon one. We've got a... We've got a Cybernet one. We've got a... We've got quite a few, but we haven't got the one... I want. Right, let's see if we've got one left because I'll tell you what, if we have got one left, it'll be the last one, I'm sure. There we are, I have found one. I bet this is the last one. 
It's the Workman CB2R and these fit or nearly fit the LCL communicator and I440DX and therefore the other sets which are the same like um, Mana Kestrel and Serpent UK 4000 and the Planet Planet 2000 anyway it's the Workman CB2R which is an American firm and I did inquire about having a Workman account but they require you to spend about 10 grand with them so that's not going to happen so this looks to be our last one yeah you, I, you know I'm sure you can shove a Savonet type one in there but it will then not be polarized and you you know you have to be very very careful So we're giving our last one to the Magpie Auto Scan. I hope it deserves it. Everything's just this very, very thin enameled copper wire. Is it was it Kevlar connected or something for those wire wrapping tools which were all the rage at one time? Okay, so what happens when we connect it to our? I'll make sure we're current limited. So I've set this up for one amp. Okay, we've got power connected. Wow, and the display works. That can be a problem. The, not the dis so much a display, but the um, the transformer in there, to, uh, wherever it is. Right, so we'll connect our test instruments. And we'll plug in the extension speaker. We'll turn down the volume and up these. So we've got the FM hiss and the squelch works. Can we change channel? Yes, we can change channel. There we go, channel 20. Now, what happens? So we're up, we want to run high power, not in PA. Oh, it does that when you press channel 9. And I've no idea how the scan works. I'll have a look at the instruction book. Right, ah, oh, plug the mic in, it's gone to 19. So, tell you what, looks like the mic is wired still for this kind of radio. So we'll select picture in picture. And on, it's camera one. There we go. And press transmit, we've got 3.1 watts. Let's see what we've got frequency wise. Should be twenty seven seven nine one two five. Twenty seven seven nine one two. I'll go up a more accurate digit. Seven nine one two one. So we've got a trimmer. It's neither here nor there. I mean that's effectively spot on. So we'll adjust the trimmer. There we go. So that's our first thing done. 
So see if it transmits any audio. Wallow. Wallow. One, two. It's a bit quiet, it's about 1.8 kilohertz. We'll just see whether it receives. So they are with it receiving. We'll stick on the synad meter. And we'll see. Just check we've got RF up. We'll see where we are. So for 12 decibel synod, it's doing 0 0.65 of a microvolt. And we'll see what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to do one microvolt for 20 dB. And it's doing just over six. So, show, sure we can put an improvement in there. So I'm quite thankful that ROM, um, EEPROM, whatever it is, it wasn't erased. Uh, I'm quite happy the capacitors are going to be all right. I suspect the detector is out. It certainly sounds that way. I'm going to have to look at the circuit diagram and just see why we've got trimmers here. Um, so the synthesizer is there, which is a Motor or MC145151. I think the detector is that one. Let's just see whether we, I, I know I'm doing this all out of uh, sequence, but let's just see whether we can improve that because it does sound pretty awful. Yeah, it was it was not um, equal. That sounds better. Don't know whether we've improved the twenty dB. So the twenty dB is now. 1.5 microvolts so we have improved the dB good let's turn these volume down we'll get on with the transmitter but I'll, first of all I'll just look at the circuit diagram and um, we'll just do a bit of a layout uh, I'll do it on the uh, on the back of this instruction book with my usual drawing which will look like a five year old did it Right, we'll fill a bit of that in. So because I haven't got a component location thing and the components are over the the parts, the parts are over the board legends, it's difficult to work out what's what. So we've covered the we know those IF ones are right. I've got a sneaking suspicion that those two are going to be the receive ones. Uh, but I can't see that. It looks to me like it was T1, T2, so I'm guessing that's T3, T4, something like that. It looks like this is the transmit lineup. I thought perhaps it was going to be the receive, but it isn't. Uh, it looks like T5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we'll go with that. And the trimmers there, the capacitors, the VC2, which is the one on the left, is transmit, and VC1 is on the right. Um, we could work that out, but um, 
I can't see that we've got a need to seeing as it's working. So, um, and then VR2 is deviation, VR, VR1's meter. That's what I've worked out from the circuit diagram. So, let's have a look. We'll go into transmit. And we now got about, yeah, 3.3 watts, something like that. Definitely a peak there. Definitely a peak there. Peak, 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 3.4 watts, that's it. Let's look at how many Zitagi watts it is. Perhaps they were manufactured with Zitagi meters. Oh, it's nearly five Zitagi watts. I'll stick the spectrum analyzer on, ready. And I think the RF meter isn't adjustable. It bangs across. I don't think that's adjustable. I'll only adjust the VR2 a VR2 deviation where we'll do that now we'll set that up with a little oscillator one, one two that's it just wanted to go up a fraction so that's deviation. TX, TX, TX. TX, TX, TX. They're going to be RX and RX for the front end. And that's going to be meter. So, um, Spectrum Analyzer. I press transmit, let's press auto, see whether we can pick it up. I may as well show that for you. No, we'll dial it in, change his glasses. Frequency. Twenty seven decimal seven nine one two five megs. Helps you put the input in. Okay, we've got some naughtiness up there. Just see it's in the early stages Whether it's in the later stages. So it looks like we need to just tune up a fraction beyond on that one. That's getting worse, that's getting better. I think I 
that's about as good as we're going to get. We're well within spec there. That's you know not a problem, but it's nice to check it. Um, I think that's covered transmit. So let's look at receive. Now I've already done the detector with you, so we got an IF and we got the detector. Uh, detector was the one on the left and the IF was on the right. I've done those. Might have to check that one again. So we'll go into the Synod meter. It's about 4 dB on that. Turn off the spectrum analyzer. It's very, very fine. Check that one. Very little adjustment. So 20 dB. Tell you what, we'll check that. We will just check that um, detector again. So 20 dB, is now, so we'll write these down, is now one point five. Where where were we before? Twelve DB. One point five five. Sorry, not point. Where are we? Look at the wrong scale. Point four nine. So we brought that down from. It didn't look like it was moving much, but it has improved it. And then ten dB. About there. Not point four one microvolts. So. We can hear it down to about 0.2 of a microvolt. So it's not outstandingly sensitive. Um, but it will be, it is crystal filtered, so it'll be good on bleed over. I don't think we're going to have any trouble with scratchy corner and all that. So let's put S9. on the signal generator and see what that's reading on the radio. It's on the plus 10, so it's VR1. Oh, 
Oh. Okay. Who's that squelch then? Because that doesn't make sense. Let's look at squelch. No. What is it? TX meter. You know what? It is. It's TX meter. So it wants to be in the centre of the red zone. So RX meter does not have an adjustment. So we'll go to RS9 again. And they've calibrated this that S9 is... That's uh, bizarre. Thirty. It's Twelve microvolts. So the other standard, which will be for ham raid equipment, is fifty microvolts, which would be there, but that's on the plus ten. And the UK CV standard is a hundred microvolts, so it reads pretty generous. Disappointing that. So I'll now amend my little sheet here to say that VR1 is TX meter. So we'll just see where it is on Squelch. So we'll put the Squelch on full. We'll see what it needs to actually bring that in. Let's put the instrument on. There we go. So we've got we've parked it at 0 0.3 of a microvolt. Let's see when it comes in. It actually comes in at 300 microvolts. I'll tell you exactly. It actually comes in at 130 microvolts, and it goes out. Oh, this is going to be fun. It goes out at 40 microvolts on full. So that's fair enough. It's a bit stronger than I would have it. And then on threshold, we'll park the uh, signal generator at 0.3 of a microvolt. Set this to threshold. Switch the signal generator on. And it's come straight in at 0 0.3. So it's going all the way down to 0 0.15, coming in at 3, 0 0.31. Squelch is superb. So the only thing is, we'll just need to look at the instruction book together. I'll have a spot of lunch, and uh, we're, we just need to look at how that scan thing works, if it does. See you in a bit. So I've been over the board with isopropyl alcohol and Mr Chippy's toothbrush which will have improved what we've got there and whilst that's been drying I've been tapping the case screw holes for M3 because they were clearly self tappers before and I don't like self tappers and they're missing anyway so if we're going to put anything in we'll put normal 3mm screws in so hopefully they will fit now. So just commenting generally. So the printed circuit board is very well made. It's plated through. You've got none of those um, pin problems where you've got um, uh, just tin connectors between tin wire connectors between one track and the other, like you have with the Shogun and like you have with the Wagner Grandstand base stations and things, which has been so problematic and, and written those kind of sets off at quite an early age. 
So what they've done, they've got a double-sided plated through printed circuit board, they've got the same on the front, and then they've got a flexi track between the front and the main board. So you've got none of that wiring that you get on the Far Eastern sets. You've got some bits and pieces of wiring, and as I say I do not like this uh, uh, wire wrap stuff, but then, you know, that was uh, not me making it, was it? There's a little bit of wiring, but as I say I don't like it. I mean, even this uh, this wire, um, I don't really think it's good for one and a quarter amps for the transmit. So we managed to get about 3.3 .3 watts out of it, 3.4, something like that, which is, to be honest, about par for the course anyway with new sets. Uh, and, of course, that's into our Marconi test set, which is selective. We've seen it on the Spectrum Analyzer, it's fine. Um, and we've seen it on the Zitagi meter, which t tells us it's five uh, dubious watts. So with that, you get a decent size made in Taiwan speaker. And we'll solder that back on. And unlike the manufacturer, I won't be hooking it through the holes. Yeah, I know that's uh, correct, but you need to, you want to be able to do these quickly. The speaker's rated at half a watt. The amplifier and the radio is rated at three watts. So that's an interesting conundrum I could have dismantled the whole thing and shoved it through the dishwasher but I was scared of the writing coming off and this is brushed aluminium and it will be affected by the chemicals we use in the dishwasher I will go over it with some foam cleanser and hopefully we can now get some normal screws in this I won't run the video while I put the screws in. Right, so there we are. We've, I, just, I will clean it a bit more before we do the on the air test. So we'll have a flick round. Oh, the mic, the up and down are the opposite way to what you think. On this one, uh, up is left, a bit like the Chinese ones do it. See if anybody's uh, on 19. One nine, Roger. And then it's got um, it's got scan, so it's supposed to switch for either busy or free, and press the channel button. Do you carry on pressing it? Yeah, you do. It's not something it does it on. Uh, it doesn't do it on its own. So if I put my signal generator on on a really big signal even though it's not plugged in, that's still on channel 20. Ah, it wasn't big enough for it to see it, to stop. So just uh, turn it up higher. No, it's, it's not... Uh... Oh, it's not on frequency anymore. It got, it's got clonked. Right, we'll try that with it on frequency. Ah, look, it says, it says B. And then for free channel, they're all free, aren't they? So, yeah, the scan works as well. So, great. And you can do that from the mic as well. We'll put that back to 
normal position. Yeah, well, we'll do it on the air test later, um, and we'll see how it works. Thank you for watching the Magpie Auto Scan 5000 from around 1983.